So thanks again for joining us here on windsurftoots.com. In this video we are going to cover something that almost every single Windows administrator um, will have to do. Um, I don't know too many networks without a printer so I figured um, covering the printer uh, server would be a good idea. Um, it will kind of show us a couple things and some improvements that are actually made between uh, printer administration in the Windows 2008 infrastructure and if you're using Windows Vista or Windows 7 clients. So um, I hope you find this video enjoyable. Before we start, um, we can just talk about a couple of things. Uh, printer servers are great things to virtualize. They don't really require a, a very powerful box. Um, they're not really too time sensitive. You know, you have the option of adjusting memory and disk space. Um, for example, when I was doing some research on this article, Microsoft has tested with Windows Server 2003, and they say the performance is even better in 2008 with a simple gig and a half of RAM um, <clears throat> and appropriate network connectivity. One print server could hold approximately 1,500 printers. That's one five zero zero fifteen hundred printers, and offer those services to between 5,000 to 10,000 clients. So that's with appropriate disk, um, like a RAID 5 scenario, and a simple gig and a half of RAM. So it really doesn't take a whole lot to be a print server, so it makes it great for virtualization. Um, we're going to cover a couple different things, and what I want to do is just get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is, this is a, a Windows 2008 box, it's not 8R2, but the similarities are almost identical. So we're going to go to our server manager, and as you've seen in the past, we're going to install the print server from one of the roles. So we're going to go up to roles here expand this option and we're going to do the standard add roles we're going to go through this fairly quickly because uh, in all honesty it's pretty easy to set up so print services okay now this um, we're just going to select the default default print server there is internet printing um, if you wanted to offer printing over the internet but we're not going to select that option at this time and that's it that are those are your options so we're just gonna let this run through and if it takes a minute we'll just meet you on the other side of the install okay so here you can see the install finished up successfully it did take a little while um, this particular machine is only single core so but let's just close out of here so gonna let this finish and so we've got a couple warnings here. We can go through and address them in just a little bit. I always do recommend um, that when you look at your roles, this is a really good place to catch warnings. Um, it's kind of a uh, condensation of your uh, uh, your event log. So definitely look at that. Um, but what you'll notice is now if we go to administrative tools, we have an option that we did not have before, and that is print management. So there's a couple things that you're going to need to know about managing printers within Active Directory. Um, you have your print server, you have group policies, and this is really an amazing thing about Windows 2008 and Windows 7, is instead of these uh, login scripts that you would have in previous versions of Windows, you can actually just deploy printers right through group policies. So you can see here that we have all, you know, this would be all of our print servers. In our case, we just have one, the local printer, um, print server here. And then under printers, you will notice that I have two options, the Microsoft Document Writer, and then I have a brother printer installed. Uh, if you were with us through the Active Directory video, you saw this. So um, a couple of things that you need to know. You can automatically assign printers to your hosts. This happens to be a 32-bit server. If you are using the same sort of processor architecture throughout your environment, this is not a big deal. If you are using a mix of 64-bit hosts and 32-bit hosts, then you need to make sure that you load both the drivers um, for these printers. And so if you look here, and we selected properties for the printer, and then sharing, and then additional drivers you'll see right here this has the x86 drivers installed 
there are X64 drivers that can be installed in the Itanium drivers. So this would probably be more for your servers. Um, so this is where you would go to install those. So just be mindful of that. And then this would point you to a folder where you have extracted those 64-bit or 32-bit, whatever drivers that you would like to ins install. Also, if you install a printer on a member server, you and you want it to be listed in Active Directory, you need to check it here. Um, so we are actually going to do that. List in directory, and we're going to hit apply. Okay. So hit OK. And so now, if you notice, I'm going to come over here to our domain controller, and I'm going to use the handy dandy dsa.msc to bring up our Active Directory users and computers. When this comes up here, I'm going to show you how you can find printers in your Active Directory. So you just right click, hit find, but instead of users, contacts, and groups, you can go printers. And now our printer is a brother, so I'm just going to type brother, and look, it will show some printers that I have installed here. So we can go, that's the shared printer, I'm going to go properties. And you can do some of the same things here, actually all of the same things here, that you would be able to do on your print server. So I just wanted to show you how that works. Going back to the print server, um, you can actually do a lot of different things here. Uh, I want to show you specifically how you can apply uh, a printer to a workstation using group policy. So we're going to go back to our domain controller. And we're just going to set up um, a group policy object. So, so we're going to use the group policy MS, uh, group pol GP MMC, um, and we are going to create a group policy object. And what, if you remember, when we did this for the WSUS server and a couple other videos, we're going to do new, and then we're going to do brother printer. Okay, so just give it a descriptive name here. So now that we have this group policy object, we're going to just apply it to our accounting um, folder here in our group policy management console. As you can see, we've got a couple other group policies. So we're just going to right click and link an existing GPO. And we're going to just link this brother printer GPO because we want it to affect our accounting users. So now the really neat thing um, is since this is a member server, you can kind of delegate uh, what you would like to do um, with your uh, member server. So if you just have just a print server, you could give an administrator the option to log on just to this print server, and you can do this. So more actions, and see this option here? Deploy with group policy. So this is really cool, right? So let's say you have just a print administrator. You don't want to give them access to your whole Active Directory or your domain controllers, just a member server. If you have the group policy already linked to the organizational unit, he can just apply it here. So check this out. We're going to go group GPO name. So we're going to go browse. And we know you could just tell your print administrator, hey, it's on the accounting OU. And look, there is our group policy. So that's wonderful. So we're going to select OK. And we want to set up this printer by all the computers. So all the computers that are set in our um, accounting organizational unit, we'll have it applied there. We can actually do it on the users as well. And in fact, I will show you um, where you can set this up in group policy. So if you were to actually come in here and you were to do edit, if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, going to go preferences and you see printers here so if you notice this is under the computer configuration and preferences control panel and printer here so you can set up printers here just like we did in WSUS but this is a little bit um, more entwined here with uh, this bad boy so we're gonna we have the brother printer GPO we're gonna add it this is the printer name, this is the GPO, and it's per machine, and we're going to click Apply. So look, it succeeded. All right, excellent. One other thing um, that is some companies might use if they're a very large organization is something called print pooling. All right. 
Um, and basically, where is this at here? Okay, this option here. Really, um, when you printer pool, you need two of the exact same printer. I don't have two brother printers here. But what you would do is so you would have two brother printers. Um, they would, you know, both be TCP IP ports, maybe be 192.168.1.5, like this printer, and 192.168.1.6. Um, and you would just click this enable print pooling, and you would ha need to have both of those printers pooled. Um, just something to note, though, is that when a user prints to a print pool, he does not or she does not have the ability to select the physical printer where his job is printed, so it would be advisable to put the printers in close physical proximity. So now that we've set up that group policy object, we're going to go back to our domain controller and we're going to force an update of group policy. So we're going to do gp update forward slash force. Okay, so this is going to force our um, Active Directory infrastructure to push down new group policy. Okay, so that succeeded. Now we're going to go and we're going to do the same thing on our workstation. And um, this will actually, we will most likely need a reboot. Um, the printer will most likely not auto populate. So GP update. But if we don't do a GP update with the force command, it can actually take about 30 minutes for this group policy to propagate through your entire active directory. So we're going to run this. And I just want to show you, actually, I should have showed you before. But if you go to devices and printers, we do not have that brother printer here. So I'm going to close out of here. We can actually check. So GP result and forward slash s for the system. We're going to go scope because that is it a user or a computer? It's a computer. We just want the brief and let's see if it applied. So look, brother printer. So we know it did apply. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to reboot this machine real quick. So that group policy object will actually latch on and take effect on this Windows 7 workstation. Um, one thing that, again, you need to remember, so if you have like a 64-bit server and you only have the 64-bit drivers loaded on that server and your workstations are 32-bit, the printer won't work because you don't have the appropriate drivers for your client. So that's something um, really important. I've actually seen a couple um, printer tutorial videos out there and they don't end up working uh, and I'm guessing my, the hunch is, is that they didn't have the extra driver loaded. So let's wait for this to come up and we're gonna log on with a user that I know is in the accounting group and let's see if we get this printer. Okay and can devices and printers here and wonderful I am not embarrassed there you go so this has been a pretty comprehensive overview of the print server service just to mention it Windows 2008 it does have a scanning service as well that's incorporated but you need a special scanner and I actually looked around on the internet and I haven't found a whole lot of them but it will you can actually scan send it to the server and it will document what you've scanned so just to toss it out there anyway I hope you found this video informative and educational and as always thank you for joining us here on windserve